Mindset matters. And you would think that a teacher of all people would have an open mindset when it comes to their own learning. But sometimes I don't. Like when I sat in a professional development session and first learned about grit. I just dismissed it as another buzzword in education. It wasn't until I actually read Angela Duckworth's book about grit that I not only saw my own story, but truly valued the implications it has for me as a teacher, as well as the lives of my students. Now, grit is not a mere buzzword in education. Grit is the heartbeat of education. It's what keeps us going as teachers, even through failure. It drives our students to try for the first time and the 300 tries after that. Duckworth defines grit as passion and perseverance to achieve a long-term goal. Based on reading and experience, I took the key components that lead to success or achievement, and I sequenced them. I want you to think about a success or achievement that you've had in your life. Let's take a closer look at what likely led to that success. First, started with an idea, an interest, passion. Next, you were motivated and decided to try. Third step is really where it all comes together, the combination of skill, talent, and ability. Now, skill is developed, talent is given, the ability to learn is not fixed, according to Carol Dweck in her work with Growth Mindset. She states that the brain actually changes and grows as it is challenged. The combination of all of this, along with effort over time, perseverance, led to your success or achievement. In education, we spend a disproportionate amount of time focusing on skill, talent, and ability. We look at strategies to teach skills, curriculum, assessment, data, repeat. We only scratch the surface of one's true potential when we are limited to skill, talent, and ability. Let me start by saying that I'm a very ordinary person when it comes to my innate ability. However, I have been able to be a part of many opportunities beyond my ability by saying, yes, let's try. Did you catch that? Beyond my ability. At the age of 18, doctors found a lemon-sized brain tumor in my head. They gave me a choice. Do nothing, and I probably wouldn't live much longer or surgery, which came with a number of risks. I asked if I could return to school and try to finish classes early. And here's my brain tumor doctor note. <laughs> Due to paralysis in my face and hearing loss, I, it changed the direction of my career plan from majoring in a concert instrument to education. During this time, I struggled with disabilities including communicating my thoughts with words. I used to speak at this rate because I couldn't find the words to express what I was thinking. Today, learning and communication still do not come easily for me. I had a scribe in college because I lacked the fine motor skills necessary to write with my hands. I didn't even schedule classes for the following semester because I was told that I would be in bed for up to a year after surgery. My first week home, I was lying on the couch and I could see flowers out the window that needed to be planted. And in that moment, I made a decision that I was going to try. I was in terrible pain and dizzy. I had an eye patch, a shaved head, and a walker. I was now permanently deaf in my right ear. I wasn't even supposed to stand up unassisted. I would get nauseous just from moving. But I took that first step and said, I'm going to try. A year later, at a time that I could have still been in bed, I ran a half marathon directly past the hospital where the nine and a half hour brain surgery took place. This is my story of grit. In my personal journey, yes, 
Let's Try, has led to many mission trips around the world, a teaching job in this district 16 years ago, 500 miles from all the people that I knew. I've tried beekeeping, banjo, knitting, piano, guitar, sewing, electrical work, floral design, and dancing. Lessons. <laughs> Some of these didn't work out like the dancing lessons. The instructor let me know pretty quickly it was not a good fit. <laughs> In the classroom, I've tried TED Talks, grants, robotics, invention trade shows, writing curriculum, teaching a gifted multi-age, and my master's in gifted education. But maybe the most significant is that I'm standing on this stage today speaking in complete, fluent sentences because I said, yes, I'm going to try. Ability had little to do with any of these. They all began because of an idea, interest, or passion, and were followed through. Grit. If you have a passion, follow it. If you don't have a passion, find it. Teachers, it is not your ability that will light a fire in yourself and in your students. It is your passion. Many of us in education have become numb. The data and numbers of box three are so close to our faces that we've lost sight of why we went into this profession to begin with. We need to reach back to box one and two and let those fuel us to be successful in box three. Pay attention to your ideas. Don't wait for a team to join you. Just move forward and act. Once I was on a field trip and we were approaching a colonial garden. And a fifth grade student who was walking with me, she saw the garden and she said, ew, it comes out of the ground and people eat it? Here we had a real disconnect with the food source and a gap in some learning that had taken place. I could not send her to middle school with these misunderstandings. So I had an idea. I wrote a grant that funded a school garden. We grew many vegetables successfully and had an end of year picnic. Families were invited and we ate a lot of squash. <laughs> Yet again, ability played a modest role in this success. All that I really did was pay attention to my idea and act on it. So these huge events are not happening daily in my classroom by any means but you will see small, meaningful ideas being played out all day, such as the fourth grade math lesson in which students are developing innovative tiny homes, or a fifth grade lesson where students are reading and discussing in Socratic seminar how they would handle current immigration policy if they were in office. I often wonder what team planning would look like if we lived in box one and two, the grit, and what I mean by this is, what if we shared lots of ideas and possibilities? How often do you avoid sharing your ideas because it may not be accepted? Or you quickly see the roadblocks to implementation? In that garden that I told you about, we didn't have a water source. That didn't stop us from carrying large buckets of water down a hill during recess. We live in a cynical world. Did you ever notice, though, that children typically aren't cynical? Children are easily excited. What would it look like if we matched their level of excitement, if we matched their level of passion, grit? In order to make a difference, taking risks is inevitable. If we never test our idea about a new way to teach a standard, complacency sets in quickly. I think that all content can be passion driven. All content can be taught with grit. All content can be learned with grit. I want this for my own children as well as my students. So how do we nurture passionate and grittier children? First, let's stop saying what they can't do 
or what we think their limitations might be because of their home life and lack of prerequisite knowledge. Allow time and space for children to share their own ideas, pay attention to them, act on them. Praise children for great effort, perseverance, and completion of challenging tasks. Listen to their voices. They need to be heard, and we know that relationships are key in our role. Encourage children to try new things. Establish a risk-free environment where brainstorming can occur. Equip them with tools to solve problems on their own. Recently, I was working with a group of seven-year-olds in math, and they wanted me to model and show them how to solve every single problem. I explained to them that this really wasn't helping them in math, and they needed to try it on their own, and they did. And it was as simple as that. This affirmation will drive them to continue to persevere. Give these opportunities often. Now, ability does matter, and you will never see me leading a Zumba class. But I know this because I've tried Zumba many times. However, if we broaden the focus that we have on skill, talent, and ability, and we begin to include developing passion, and perseverance, we will truly be equipping our children for a more successful future. Some of the best ideas may be resting within you. Begin paying attention to them, sharing them. Say yes, let's try, and move forward with those that deserve to be lived out. My first few weeks as a teacher, an older gentleman he looked me directly in the eyes, and unflinchingly, he said, you'll be doing good to make it a year. Today, I still teach, not because of skill, not because of talent, not because of passion. No, it is because of passion, <laughs> not because of skill, not because of talent, not, I got, thought I was at the end here. Not because of skill, not because of talent, not because of ability. I teach because of passion and perseverance. Grit. Thank you.